Did you know that you can bend and animate objects in Blender without using bones? This is a complete game changer because you can animate almost anything like this. I'm going to assume in this tutorial that you understand how the basic animation functions work in Blender. I'm talking about basic keyframing, location, rotation, scale, animating objects, keyframe interpolation, and all this basic shit. If you don't know this, I'm doing a little bit of a course on Patreon where I explain this for complete beginners. So go check that out, otherwise just Google it. And since I'm assuming that you understand this, I'm also assuming that you understand that you can't keyframe geometry. You can change the location, rotation, and the scale of individual objects, but the geometry is fixed. There's no we can change that in the animation using just keyframes. Some people like to use bones and armatures and this can be useful for characters and more complex shit. But sometimes you don't need this. I don't like using bones. So I'm going to show you a cooler alternative. And if you want, we can do another tutorial about bones. In Blender, there is a feature called Lattice. The Lattice is like an empty cube, which you can place around an object like you see me doing right here. You can go over here to Lattice Properties, crank up the resolution, and this cube is going to be subdivided. Now you can select your mesh add a lattice modifier and use this eyedropper shit to target the lattice and now when you select this lattice and you go to edit mode you can select the vertices and you can move them and this is going to bend the object below each vertex has an area of influence and you can use this to bend and twist objects in very interesting ways this is very similar to using proportional editing in edit mode because it's also smooth and there's an area of influence and you can control the fall off and whatever but using proportional editing is very destructive and you still can't animate with this the whole point of the lattice is that it's very easy to undo because it's a simple mesh. Now you still can't animate or keyframe these vertices in the lattice, but there's something else that you can do. And let me show you what I'm talking about. If you're trying to follow along this tutorial, I'm going to recommend that you use a resolution of four on the U axis, four on the V axis, and let's also do four on the W axis. Now let me show you a very interesting modifier known as the hook modifier. With shift A, we're going to add a new empty and let's click on plane axes. We're going to place that somewhere near the corner of this lattice, select the lattice grid, go to the modifier section, add a new hook modifier, use the eyedropper to target this new axis shit. And now we're going to go to the object data properties, add a new vertex group, select this vertex on this corner, click assign, and now this is part of a vertex group which we can very easily select. We can add more items to this vertex group, but for now we're just going to use this one vertex. Now back in the modifiers menu, select the group which we just created. And now the hook modifier allows us to use this external object to control this particular vertex over here. It's moving this entire vertex group. So when we move this object, this vertex is essentially parented to that object. We can scale this, we can rotate it, we can move it around, and it's going to move this vertex with it. And when this vertex moves, the mesh below is moving as well. Now in this lattice object, we can add more vertices to this group. Just select them, select this group, and click assign. And now they're all part of this group, which means when we move this, it's going to pull all of these vertices with it. And as you can see, that makes some interesting transformations on this object. We're going to remove this vertex group and now select all the vertices from the top of the lattice. Add those to a new vertex group, which we're going to name top, or maybe we should name this one. Place this somewhere over here. And in the hook modifier on this grid, we're going to remove this old group and select a new group number one. Now this empty object is controlling the entire top layer, which makes it very easy to stretch this out and to bend this in interesting ways. We can now set a keyframe on frame zero, keyframe location, rotation, scale, and now move to frame 60, lift this up, keyframe again, duplicate the first keyframe with shift D and place it somewhere on the end and now this is going to move up and then it's going to come back down now this is just a very simple animation there's a bunch of crazy shit that you can do with this feature select the lattice and temporarily remove this vertex group from the hook modifier place the cursor in the middle of the lattice snap this empty to the middle of the lattice and lift it up to here somewhere we're going to select this object and with f2 we're going to rename it into empty one then we're going to duplicate it this one's going to be called empty two and duplicate them both one more time and give them their appropriate names so empty three and empty four. Now we also need some more vertex groups because each of these is going to control a separate layer. And that's going to allow us to twist this. It's going to allow us to do some crazy shit with this feature. So lattice edit mode, select this lower layer, add a new vertex group, assign that to the selected area and double click and rename this into two. Another vertex group for the third layer, assign that, name that to three. And finally layer number four, assign that. And now each of these layers or each of these vertical subdivisions has its own vertex group, which means empty 
number one up here has to control the first vertex group in the hook modifier. Now, since we moved this up here and this was not the initial position of this empty, we better get rid of this hook modifier, add another one, target this object again, and apply the vertex group again. Now we're starting from scratch and this is the base position. So let's close this and add another hook modifier to the lattice, target empty two and vertex group number two. Now the second empty here is twisting this lower area and think about what we can do in a second when we animate this shit. Because this is a separate object, we can animate separate objects. You can't animate geometry, but you can animate objects. And if you animate an object which is pulling geometry with it, well now you're also animating geometry. So let's keep going, we need another hook modifier, let's add two more. So in total we have four. This is going to target object three and group three, and this will target object four and group four. Now all of these are working separately, and there's a bunch of totally crazy shit that we can do with this feature. Check out what I'm doing right now by individually rotating these around the 3D cursor while the 3D cursor is the pivot point. It's almost like one of those springs. What the fuck do you call this slinky or something? Why the fuck do they call this a slinky? You know that colorful shit that you can drop down the stairs, and it's going step by step until it gets to the bottom? I don't know who came up with this shit, but you know what I'm talking about. Google slinky. You can do this with this feature. Now here's the best part. You know when you got a wet towel and you want to twist it to get the water out? Well, you can do this with this tub of protein. Here's an easy way to animate that. First, we're going to select all of these empties here, which control the position of the geometry below. On frame zero, we're going to keyframe the location, rotation, and scale. And then we're going to move to something like frame 100. Give me some more duration in my animation. Select the top, activate proportional editing, go to sharp fall off, switch back to medium point from 3D cursor, press G and expand the area of influence until all of these are in the circle of influence. We can even use linear fall off in this case, it might work a bit better. And now on keyframe 100, we're just going to rotate the top. And as you can see, it's also slowly rotating the other empties, but not as much, which is exactly the sort of motion that you're looking for. The top is getting twisted a lot, but the bottom is not getting twisted relative to the top. So now again, select all of these, press I, keyframe, location, rotation, scale. And now if you go from frame zero to frame 100, this is going to twist. Now, of course, when you twist it, it also has to get shorter. So here's what we're going to do. Place the 3D cursor on the bottom empty right here. Select all the other empties, remove proportional editing, use the 3D cursor as a pivot point. Jump over here to frame 100 where we have a keyframe. Go up here to options, affect only locations. And now when you scale this down towards this point, the protein tub is going to get compressed. So now select all of these again, I keyframe location rotation scale. And now as they're getting twisted, they're also getting compressed. So that makes it look a lot more realistic. I don't know why I'm doing this. You guys get the idea. I just want to give you guys some ideas, give you some inspiration to show you what type of shit you can do with this. I'm also going to get paid more if it's a longer video. So let's get that out of the way. And now to make this even better, on frame 100, I'm going to select these middle two empties. I'm going to press S to scale them, but I'm going to press Shift Z to exclude the Z axis from the scaling. Also make sure to uncheck this effect only locations up here. And now you can make these narrower, so the middle is going to look thinner. Now again, keyframe location, rotation, scale. And now the middle is going to become thinner as this is getting twisted, which is going to make it look more realistic. Now you can bring this back by taking this first keyframe, but make sure that you have everything selected so you copy the keyframe from all these objects. Press shift D and bring this over to something like frame 200 and now after this gets twisted It's going to come back to its original position. So check this out You can play this it becomes twisted and then after it's done It's going to spring back to its original position and let's take a close look at the geometry of this object as we're doing this As you can see everything is getting nicely twisted and deformed But then it returns to its original position and nobody got hurt Tell me this isn't one of the coolest things you learn about blender at least today If not this week if not this fucking year at least like the damn video and subscribe to the channel But check out my fucking ebook we're releasing a texturing update tonight and in the future we're gonna put more tips in there about this type of animation shit that you see me talking about right here follow me on twitter because i know all of you guys are trying to make money online and i give a bunch of cool tips that are gonna help you with that there and if you like the way i talk and the shit i say wait until you see my instagram i also do longer videos on rumble where i talk about crazy shit that i can't talk about here so go subscribe over there and join my discord because soon we're going to announce some news we're going to do something with that discord community that nobody has ever done before this is going to be the the craziest shit that you ever seen. So follow me on all platforms and stay tuned because you're gonna love this. I guarantee that you're not prepared for what this is going to be. That's enough. Let me know what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next one.